Hi there, everybody. This is Kelly Jean Ghetto Finger with Always Stampin' Videos. Thank you so much for tuning in to my channel today. Today, I'm going to show you how to make the cutest little gift card envelope from just a piece of 6x6 six six designer series paper or decorative paper. Um, most of the items that I am using today will be from Stampin' Up! and you can find them on my website always stampin with kelly.stampinup.net uh, if you use july's hostess code when this video was made i will send you a special little thank you in the mail so screenshot now and that way you'll remember my website and the hostess code for july 2022 <laughs> not 2021 all right so this is the cutest little envelope i'm also going to show you how to put together a little three by four journaling card that fits great inside the envelope along with whatever you want to include in the envelope. You can put a little gift card in there, some cash, a little pair of earrings, or a tea bag, whatever, okay? So this video will show you the complete envelope and then a little journaling card to go along with it. Let me show you first what you need in the way of supplies. You're gonna need at least one six by six piece of designer series paper or decorative paper. Um, now I say at least one because if you um, need more to create the journaling card, then you'll, you'll want another piece. But I'm starting with a six by six piece of designer series paper, a three by four inch piece of designer series paper, a piece of white, cardstock and that's going to be for my stamping purposes and then two pieces of designer series paper that measure one and three quarters by four and a half inches um, and when i get to this part i will explain to you that you don't necessarily have to have two um, one is suffice but i'll show you that when we get there and you'll understand more why okay so there's those supplies you're going to need a 12 by 12 trimmer 12 by 12 paper trimmer, um, or a score tool. It's kind of up to you. Um, I am using the inks Mossy Meadow and Daffodil Delight, along with the markers, Stampin' Right markers. Um, let's see here, I've got Highland Heather, uh, Blushing Bright, is that Blushing Bright or no? Yep, it is Blushing Bright and Daffodil Delight, so I'm using those. And then the stamp sets that I'm using, um, actually stamp set, just one, is called Cup of Tea. So when this video was created, um, this <laughs> stamp set is still available on the Stampin' Up! website on in my online store. And then I'm also using the coordinated um, dies that go along with this stamp set. All right. Let me get these out of the way and oh oh that's my kitty sorry giving you a little earthquake there she loves <laughs> loving on the camera while i'm making my videos <laughs> all right so first things first let's bring in the envelope let's make the envelope all right so Typically, I like to use um, patterns that aren't going a particular direction so that you can make this envelope any way, any way that you put it into your, um, your, your personal trimmer or your score, board or your score tool. Um, so I like to start by measuring one inch on the right side and Stampin' Up's paper trimmer is great because it has one and a half inches on the right side. So you're not holding on to a little bitty piece of the designer series paper as you measure it. So I'm gonna measure on the right side one inch. I'm sorry, I'm gonna score it, <laughs> not measure it. So measure and score. And then I'm just gonna keep pushing it into my uh, trimmer so that on the left side, I'm scoring at two inches. I'm gonna quarter turn my designer series paper and I'm gonna score at three quarter inch. And then I'm going to turn my designer series paper in my paper trimmer all the way around to the opposite side and score three quarter inch. 
I'm not flipping it. I didn't flip it. I just turned it. Okay. All right. And then we can do away with the paper trimmer or the score tool. And now we're going to miter our corners. So mitering the corners just means trimming away these four scored areas on our envelope. And when I do this, I like to trim at a slight angle. That's basically what mitering is. It's just trimming at a slight angle. I don't know if you can kind of see that in the, in the camera or not. So we're gonna do that to all four corners so that it ends up looking like this, okay? And then we'll just fold on all of those scored areas. You can flatten this down with a bone folder if you like. Um, I'm not going to right now, just to save time. And then um, I'm going to add adhesive just to my longest or largest tab here so that when I fold this up, this tab, the, long, the largest tab, will be adhered to these two smaller side tabs, okay? And I will show you the adhesive area when I get it done. That way you can get an idea of exactly where to add that adhesive, okay? So you should be able to see, sometimes it'll reflect, there it is. So just that small area down there at the bottom, just fold the envelope up. And look, it's already almost done, but look. <laughs> okay, so it won't close, right? Because there's just a little bit of a gap. That's what these two pieces here are for, the one and three quarter inch by four and a half. So you've got two of those. Remember I said you have two, but I, I wanted to explain a little something to you. So what you're gonna do is you can add your designer series paper here like this and close it up like this so that you see um, two, the two different patterns, which is really, really cute, right? So for that, you would only need one piece. I think that that looks amazing. Or if you don't want to see two patterns up next to each other like that, then what you could do is you could add both pieces, one to the front and one to the back, so that you have that. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So I personally like this one with the pattern like, how did I have that? Mm -hmm. That. So I'm, that's what I'm gonna do to mine. So I'm gonna add the adhesive to the remaining tab. And then just bring that one, in, one and three quarter inch by four and a half inch piece here and close it up so that it looks like that. Now, if you wanted to, you could trim these edges here to make it look more like an envelope. Let me show you what I did with my other ones. So notice how this is here at an angle. When you close it, you can kind of see the remaining part of the envelope. So let me show you how to do that really quickly and get both sides evenly trimmed. All right, so I'm bringing back my paper trimmer and I'm going to put the scored fold in the track of my trimmer and bring this corner of the envelope to meet any of these corners. <laughs> Let me get that in the camera. Any of these corners here. So depending on how deep you want your angle, you can go further out into these corners on your trimmer. I hope that makes sense. Let me show you. Okay, so. I'm gonna hold this up to the camera and try to hold all of it at the same time. So the fold will go in the track, and then this corner is just gonna go out to one of those corners on my trimmer. So if I wanted a deeper angle, then I would just tilt it so that that deeper angle, my fold goes in the track of the trimmer and the point of the envelope goes to the corner there on my paper trimmer. Okay, so I don't want my um, angle to be very deep. So I'm just gonna go to that first mark on my paper trimmer and trim. And then I'm gonna turn it around, get my little pieces out of the way, 
and do the exact same thing. So I've flipped it over and I'm just gonna do the exact same thing, go into the paper track or, or the trimmer track and to the first mark and trim away. And so that's what I end up with. I have both sides, perfect little angle. I love that. Hope you enjoy that tip. Um, okay, so basically our envelope is done. Now you could put a belly band around this or you could put some adhesive here so that it seals, um, whatever you like to do with that. But let me just show you really quickly how to put together that beautiful um, three by four journaling card. Okay, so I'm using the rose that goes along with Oh, you know what I take? I, <laughs> I'm actually using another stamp set. Wonderful world. I forgot all about that. I was using that stamp set. I love this rose. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna completely ink this up with Daffodil Delight. So I'm gonna go into that Daffodil Delight completely. And then I'm gonna bring in the, you know what, I said I was using three markers. I'm actually using four. I'm gonna grab my other marker, Messy, Messy Masso, Messy Motto, hmm, <laughs> Mossy Meadow. And I'm going to use the brush tip of my marker to color in the stem and the leaves of my rose. This stamp stamps beautifully. Um, I just love the way it stamps. Let's see here, I'm gonna go this way with it because I also wanna show you a cool technique to use on your little tea bag. Look how beautiful that is. It's just beautiful. Okay, now I'm going to fussy cut this out, which I already have. And I wanna show you how beautiful it looks fussy cut. How pretty is that? I just love it. Okay, and then the other thing that I did was ran my little teacup die through with some designer series paper that coordinates with this paper. I'm sorry, it's no longer available, but it is stamping up. So go to my online store and check out all the other six by six pieces of um, designer series paper. I took a journaling pen and just doodled around my little teacup to sort of make it stand out, look more like a little teacup. All right, and so I'm gonna set that aside until I'm ready to put it all together. Um, let's see, what else do I need to do? Let's show you the stamping for the little tea bag. Okay, so I've got the little tea bag here that goes along with cup of tea, and I'm gonna stamp it in the mossy meadow. I'm gonna clean that off. And then when I bring it back in, I'm going to Flip it. I'm just gonna flip my stamp over. Okay, so this is the opposite side, the side that normally sticks to the block. And I'm going to bring in my markers now and just give some doodles. Let's see, I want the yellow first. So this is Daffodil Delight. I'm just doodling here and there, Highland Heather. and also some Blushing Bride. I've got a water bottle that's just gonna spritz that. Did I even get it on there? <laughs> some of it I think I did and some of it I don't think I did. There we go. And then I'm going to stamp that right on top of my little tea bag. Sometimes it comes out with just some amazing patterns. Uh, let me show you this one again. Look how cute that one did. It turned out so pretty. I absolutely love it. Um, I actually already have one trimmed out and I'll show you and I stamped it with it's um, with it's time for tea. Cute, right? So cute. I just love the way that turned out. All right, and so then what I'm going to do here is add a dimensional to the back of my tea bag. Just one. And then I have my scotch tape. 
I'm going to show you a little tip on how to um, make a little string for your tea bag. So what I'm doing here with this little bitty teeny tiny piece of scotch tape is I'm going to wrap this around. I already have part of it attached to my teacup. So now I'm going to attach it to my tea bag. So I'm going to wrap my um, baker's twine around that little piece of tape. And that way, that is the easiest way I have found to um, make your little string stick to the back of your image and stay fast. Um, I'm going to trim, I'm actually going to trim this down. I've got some sticky scissors here. Trim down my piece of tape that is. And that is going to go on the back of my little tea bag so that it sticks to my teacup like that. Super cute, right? Okay, and then that, I personally like to round my corners of my journaling cards, so I've done that. And then I'm gonna stick my little teacup right here in the center. So cute, right? And then that rose that I trimmed out, I'm just gonna pop that in. There it is. So cute. Let's bring back our envelope. Pop it into the envelope. Oh, wait a minute, that's not the right envelope. <laughs> Where's my other envelope? Here it is. <laughs> Pop it in there and you're all set to go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments um, what you thought and if you'll be making some of these. And I hope you have a creative day. Thanks everybody.